For WeAreSC.com, I'm Angel Vizcarra, joined by Daryl Rideau following USC's 15-14 loss here at the LA Memorial Coliseum tonight against the Cal Golden Bears. No Gary Pasquis tonight, he'll be back next week, but um, Daryl and I are going to break this ball game down. And Daryl, obviously an ugly score in an ugly game. USC loses its 14-game winning streak against Cal. That is snapped tonight. As a former player, just really quickly, can you let us know what are your thoughts? Angel, do you see my face? I'm pissed. It's my homecoming. It's your homecoming. It's yeah. your senior year. Okay? I graduated officially in 2004, played on some bad teams and some great teams. Under Pete Carroll, this team feels a lot like it did under Paul Hackett when we went 3-8 and eight to finish the year. What I saw on the field, a first half where USC puts up 14 points, goes into halftime, feeling probably overconfident, a little bit too good for, them, for their own bridges, only to come out and what do we see? We see a team unravel. Another a botched um, exchange between center and quarterback yeah. leads to a safety. And immediately after that, you see the body language angel a little dejected. And, and that leads to another seven points. So now USC finds himself up 14 to nine. And all of a sudden, it felt like the sideline started to press. Yeah. And things went bad in a hurry in the third quarter where USC falls behind 15 to 14 and they never really seemed like oh. they had an answer or any way to respond. And I don't know about you, Angel, but from your observation, it looked like people started leaving and retreating yeah. well before USC lost the lead. Yeah. And that begs to, to add, uh, that begs the question that I believe you want to ask, yeah. or at least our fan base is asking, has Clay Hilton lost this program? Yeah. I think it's a fair question. Yeah, what are absolutely. your thoughts? Well, I mean, being down here on the field level, you and I both heard it. We heard very clearly, fire Helton chants. Yeah. You hear that from the fans. And certainly, I mean, when it's a 15-14 game, it's got to be much more painful coming away with a loss in that situation. Just the game was so within reach, right. but it felt so far away. You got to wonder if maybe not only has he lost the fans, but maybe he's lost some of these players. Well, oftentimes character is revealed most in times of adversity. And what we see during times of adversity is a team that doesn't understand how to handle that pressure. Perhaps it's leadership. Perhaps it's the blend of the, the inexperienced players who are yeah. forced into leadership roles yeah. and not quite understanding what it takes to close out a game and that's what we're seeing today yeah. whether or not he's lost this program is yet to be determined it, it'll it'll be it'll will reveal itself against ucla at the rose bowl when there's yeah. nothing left to play for what type of team will show up but for now i can tell you one thing that he's definitely lost the fan base and you you start to wow. lose me and you lose credibility with me if you're clay helton when we're in a press conference and the question is asked yeah. are you losing your program or or is your program in good shape in in a condescending kind of like a snarling remark yeah. he responds back i think the program is in, in great shape and i have a tremendous amount of confidence in the coaches and these players look you may you may believe that but you're not you're not selling me that this program is going or heading in the right direction yeah. when you're two years removed from playing in the Rose Bowl game a victory against Penn State all right Daryl and just two years ago we were playing in that Rose Bowl you're talking about and now USC a team entering week 12 against UCLA not even bowl eligible yet right if you're a player I mean, you got to be hoping your team's bowl eligible, but beyond that, knowing that the Pac-12 South is pretty much out of reach at this point, what's left to play for if you're a player on this well, team? Well, if I'm a junior and a senior, it's a gut check. When I look myself in the mirror, I have to first ask the question, am I developing? Am I being properly prepared to go into battle? Was this game plan sufficient enough for us to pull out a victory? Statistically, one would argue yes, but yeah. when there's nothing left to play for, then you play for your brothers. And against UCLA, you're playing for the victory bell, and against Notre Dame, you're playing for the Shalala. There's a lot of pride left in playing when you talk about the two rivals that, that USC is oftentimes known for. When all else fails, you remember for how you do against UCLA and Notre Dame. But right now, there's a serious gut check and there's a serious question that begs in that locker room. Do we believe in the leadership of our coaches and are they putting us in the best position to be as successful as possible? Do we have the right personnel on the field? Should competition be opened up for younger guys to, to demonstrate what they're capable of doing if 
this coaching staff believes that they're going to be here for the long haul. I think you have to start thinking about opening up competition to see what you have coming back. All right, and one last thing I want to ask you, personnel-wise for this team, we see in the first half, JT Daniels goes 15-20, 147 yards through the air, two touchdowns. Those are solid numbers, folks, in the first half for JT. Right. But in the second half, the USC offense as a whole, 41 yards. It, it, yin and yang again you know it felt like in the first half he was completing somewhere around 75 percent of his yeah. passes but in the second half like like we talked about before when when the pressure is on this team doesn't seem to understand how to respond perhaps it's attrition where you know key players are getting injured i don't know i don't like to make excuses because if you listen to this coaching staff it's not about starters it's about role players guys filling in certain roles well we're not seeing those role players effectively executing the game plan and as a result of that you find yourselves behind 15 to 14 and it feels like you're in a deeper hole the game was well within hand but they couldn't develop enough plays to march down the field and at least put yourself in field goal position yeah. and that comes back again attention to details that's going to fall on clay helton's head and so this loss is greater than any other loss all season because you only had a little bit left to play for and now it seems like you're losing that equity all right, well, we have a lot to think about, a lot to say as USC fans. Daryl, I know we could be here all night chatting. But now, as we see this Coliseum being transformed, I think we might see some transformation in the USC football program. And a lot of folks are certainly clamoring for that over here on the USC campus. So that's all we have from tonight. USC loses tonight 15-14. to Boy, it's an ugly score um, against Cal, the Cal Golden Bears. The Trojans will be heading over to the Rose Bowl next week to take on the UCLA Bruins in a game that doesn't seem like such a gimme anymore no. for the Trojans. So for Angel Vizcarra, Daryl Rudeau, you're watching. We are SC.